I'm rolling. Look at you fucking slumped into the couch. Donald Trump tried to do a coup d'etat this week. Stone cold coup d'etat. Uh, but it was a uh, lame ass, stupid ass, bitch ass, fat ass, bitch ass coup d'etat. Yeah. Unless, and I'm not sure about this, it was Antifa all along. And the reports are still out. So we don't know exactly who was wearing the MAGA hats yeah. and who was flying the Trump flags. We still don't know. That is the agenda this week. That was a super spreader event. That oh, yeah. It had to have been a super spreader event. I got a tweet today that was like, I'm really excited for this next episode. You guys have so much to talk about. And I was like, yeah, because like, I mean, we love getting political on the show, but like also like we can easily spin it like that was a super spreader event. Oh, so yeah. So many people are going to give their fucking family COVID because um, these fucking fucks trying and to take on the today's Capitol episode, building. we actually have a special guest. That's oh, yeah. right. A celebrity. Johnny got him. Did it, dude. Justin we're, Pearson. We're shaking hands. 31G Records, The Locust, Locust, Swing Kids, Holy Molars, Retox, Dead Cross, uh, Deaf Club. We could sit here and name his bands all day, but so we're not going to. Two people out there just shit their pants. Oh, and, yeah. And went, these guys aren't fucking serious, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I assume it'll be something in the thumbnail. It's in the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. It's in the title. We're saying it right now, and they still are like shitting their pants. Like, yeah. No fucking way that's real. One of them is my friend Alec. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's real. We talked to Justin. Yeah, it was uh, awesome. Just a few moments ago, we have that conversation. We're going to we're gonna give it to you in just a few minutes. What a nice guy. What a creative and talented guy. Yeah. And it was really interesting to hear about how he's been dealing with the pandemic, how uh, his tours and all his bands had to deal with all of this. Yeah. He was very fun to talk to. Very cool guy. I'm, we're going to get to that in just a minute. As the earth is carbon bombed by poisons, I keep it safe, I keep it clean, I keep it here inside, with Mega 64 and T. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Uh, you know, I'm just chilling. I had so much You're shit vibing. to do yesterday, and all I could do is just watch TV. Uh, it I was, woke it up. It was like the greatest episode of Cops. Of all time. And you it's know how much I love cops. cops. Yeah. You know how much I love live PD. You know how much I love reality TV where they're fighting the criminals and, and God, it was like an episode of cops, but the cops have to save the world or they have to save America. You know, listen, this is where I'm coming from. Johnny. I don't like this bit. What the fuck are you I'm, talking about? I'm joking. About? I'm joking. Continue. America is the world, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So if the cops have to save America, that means the cops have to save the world. And if it's a reality TV show where the cops have to save the world, that means it's the greatest episode of Cops. And yeah. that's what we watched yesterday. Uh, it was a little bit disappointing, much like the season finale to Game of Thrones. I like the earlier episodes better. I was going to make a joke about how the earlier season of Cops uh, with all the BLM protests was way more intense. But I didn't make that joke, Johnny. You're looking at me like I made that joke. I'm just explaining the joke I didn't make. Yeah. Let it be known that uh, I really thought they were going to whoop ass yesterday. I, and I, I don't was know. Like, I couldn't get any work done. I kept telling everybody. I was like, I got work to do. I have papers to go over and videos to make, but this is like a pay-per-view and I yeah. know the main event is coming and I don't want to walk away. It was like horrifying. Like during the George Floyd protests, like seeing a lot of protesters, like, you know, get hit in the eyes with rubber bullets, and like have to lose eyes and stuff. But when I saw the cops show up for these protesters, I literally like, I did one of these. I was like, fuck yeah, it's time. It's our time, baby. But I don't know. Really it was do. a peaceful demonstration. Yeah, peaceful. Um, should we talk about the conversation you had with your dad while the protests were going on? <laughs> I mean, I could. People already uh, hate my dad. People so. already hate your dad. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a couple things that go into it. Like, I woke up and immediately to this news 
Uh, I woke up at like noon because I, I, I am a degenerate and uh, my blood just started boiling. The fact that these fuckers were able to just like get through barricades and just like how easily they were able to get into like a, 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 a this building like really upset me. And uh, so I texted my dad who uh, was always kind of against the looting of the of targets and stuff with the BLM protests. Huh. Yeah. And I always told him terrible, like, terrible, terrible stuff. Yeah. You know, a fucking corporation doesn't matter. Like target's going to be fine. It's like, you know, yeah, the, the, it, what matters is the protests. He's like, well, like if they're looting, blah, blah, But, um, okay. I, so your dad's anti looting. Yeah. So I told him destruction I, of property, I right? Said, uh huh. You cannot talk about looting a target ever again. Uh huh. Because these racist fucks were able to storm our capital. What did he say? And he said, two sides of the same coin. Oh, I thought he said, let them have their day. Oh, yeah, he did say. Yeah, he said, let them have their day. They're just sore losers. And I was like. Uh, which I thought was like hilarious, considering the sentiment of don't fucking fuck with this target. Don't fuck with this target. They could take but our capital. They're going to the capital with like zip ties and uh, looking like fucking tenant. Like a I mean, I tenant. saw baseball bats on TV. Yeah, I saw baseball bats on TV. Let them have their day. They're going to go in there with a couple baseball bats, a couple zip ties. They're going to smash some skulls and it's going to be over. Just let them have their day. So uh, right now you're sitting at home. You're fuming you're like Johnny's dad. Ooh, I hate that guy. But then he follows up the text. He goes. I'm getting the vaccine tomorrow. On an unrelated note, getting the vaccine tomorrow. He's getting vaccinated. So there's that. He's getting vaccinated for you, for me, for Derek. He's not getting vaccinated for me. Fuck that. Shut up. Don't throw me under the bus. I have nothing to do with your dad. He's fucked up and I hate him. <laughs> yeah, he sent Just me, kidding. He's cool. He sent me a text of like him getting vaccinated. Nice. Hours ago. So... Um, you know, I, uh, I am a little bit of a hist uh, American Sorry. history buff. Yeah. So I thought it was interesting just to see American history unfold. Yeah. That was interesting just to watch history happen. And I thought to myself, you know, in the context of history, we'll always remember Civil War One ended slavery. Civil War Two overthrew an election and installed a loser dictator. So that's cool. I mean, you know, you, you know what, why we fight these wars. That's what it's all about. Uh, so that was the news yesterday. That's where we are now. Everybody there is going to get COVID. Probably they're going to get the new UK flu, the more highly infectious <laughs> version. <laughs> Wait, can we come up with, with like name names for the UK flu? Like the the British uh, bulldog like kung flu. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, yeah. The, uh, what are some uh, stereotypically the, traditional UK things? Fish the, and chips. Yeah. Big Ben. Big Ben. Crisps. Crisps. Football. The fo Beatles. The Beatles. <laughs> uh, we could call it like the Beatles flu. We could call Beatle it Beatlemania. This is stupid. Man. Okay, sorry. There's no good. Uh, there's no good name. Anyways, uh, we have some videos. We have some other current events to go over. Johnny's gonna show me some crazy shit. He's gonna get my reactions to it, and then we're gonna get to this uh, interview with Justin. Yeah. Okay. Here's so, yeah, I'm still let's do it. I'm still on the quest to find a theme song. Oh, shut the fuck up. I'm really? still I'm still trying to find a theme song. Yeah, okay. And our our homie, I don't remember his name ever. This will be the last time we show this guy. Yeah, but he's got he's got another bop. And this will probably be the shortest one. Hopefully we don't get demonetized for this one. But uh mm. this one's called Social Distancing. I feel like we get a real peek into this guy's life in this one. Oh yeah, I think it's Dolly Parton. Do you remember when we kiss and hug? I really don't care. We would touch <laughs> each other without rubber gloves. Now we stay inside. Pause this. There ain't <laughs> I can't pause this. Just stop, it. <laughs> Just stop it. Just stop it. Just stop it. I'm trying to. <laughs> the fact that this guy has to sing a song about babe, remember when we can kiss and hug and kiss and touch? Yeah. Just to me says that he's single. 
Clearly, this guy has I, no woman. I mean, he has like two vans. I'm sure he, he has, has like 80 vans. kids. He, he probably just has two of his own personal vans. Yeah. He probably is in love with the vans because he has nobody to love in life. Those I can't babies. relate to like complaining about social distancing. Like seriously. Yeah. Kiss your wife. Take the fucking rubber gloves off, man. I ain't going to tell anybody. I don't give a fuck. Are you upset that you can't go out there and kiss fucking strangers on the street without rubber fucking gloves? What's the problem with social distancing? Babe, remember we could kiss and touch without fucking putting plastic on? Who are you talking to? Some rando on the street? You fucking groper? You fucking cereal groper? Oh! Oh, don't mind my gloves. I'm just coming to touch you. Wouldn't it be nicer if I could take the gloves off? Get the fuck away from me, you I just, fucking sicko. I just miss when I could like put my hand on someone's shoulders and call them sweetheart. Just oh, what what kind of world we living in right now? Fucking dumbass. <laughs> Who are you touching with gloves on? I don't know. Who are you touching with gloves on? Nobody's touched me and kissed me with a glove on. Have Johnny legitimately, has anybody hugged, kissed, touched, or done anything affectionate with like PPE on? This guy just fucking pissed me off. I can't handle I, the I, fucking I, stupidity of this song. Yeah, I don't want to say, but maybe. Who? Who did it? Uh, maybe an ex. I don't know. Somebody kissed you with PPE on? Huh? I don't know. Maybe they had gloves on or some shit. Maybe an ex? Maybe they had some like uh, goth ass black gloves on. Got freaky. Wait, you got freaky with somebody who was still wearing their protective COVID gloves? Oh, no. I meant this was pre COVID, but. Well, okay. Then you missed the point of the question. Okay. I thought you were asking if you ever. Did anything with someone with gloves on? I was like, no. Oh, oh wow. Some freaky shit. Well, we just all learned something about Johnny's <laughs> history, ladies and gentlemen. Johnny was like, uh, I stopped paying attention for a second. Yeah. Is he asking me if I've ever had freaky sex with somebody wearing kinky goth latex gloves? Yeah. The answer is yes. No, that wasn't my question. Yeah. But thanks for being so honest. I got teleported back to a, a simpler time. <laughs> Holy shit. This got kinky, everybody. It doesn't matter, but this guy's complaining that he can't kiss and hug his lover without wearing PPE because of social distancing. Yeah. Has anybody during COVID tried to be affectionate with you without taking their PPE off? Um, yeah. Like a lover? Yeah. What? Natty like uh, gave me a kiss on the cheek with a mask on once. She kissed you with her mask on? Yeah. Like it was like. Yeah. All right. Well, then I'm the fool here. But that was like, that was, no, that was just being silly. I mean, no, you're right. I take it back. This guy's song, it makes sense. Yeah. I don't think we need to hear any more, right? Or should we keep going? I can't believe you let somebody kiss you with the PPE mask, dude. Yeah, probably. They got all that COVID on, yeah. on the mask and then they put it on your face. All, all the comments on this episode would be like, oh my God, Johnny, Woo. I can't yeah. believe you. Respect in the toilet, honestly. <laughs> Uh, you have no right to talk about people mask protesting or anything. Anyways, what's the next thing you want to talk to me about? I mean, if you want to talk about fucking around uh, during a pandemic uh, and just being a, a fucking weirdo. Just load it up. Oh, what is this shit? <laughs> no way. What the fuck is this? Oh, that girl looks so scared. <laughs> Aww, dude. The the audio got fucked up or whatever. You got the point. <laughs> Why is he gotta scare the young girl in Walmart? She's just there with her mom. Yeah. Oh man. So. This is why you can't go in a Walmart, dude. This is why you cannot go into a fucking Walmart. That was like this is a couple days ago. Legitimately, this is why I'm terrified to go into Walmart. <laughs> because not every body at Walmart is an idiot, but all, yeah. all idiots go to Walmart. Yeah. Uh, I saw that on TikTok and then I was scrolling on TikTok and I saw another one like uh, from there's a dude you see in the background. That dude made a TikTok and it's just him like filming the milk being like, what the fuck? Like Shit. just genuinely upset in a mask. I was like, oh, I feel for this guy. <laughs> But thought I'd share that with everyone. That's uh, that's some Mega sixty four shit right there. Yeah, during a pandemic. Yeah, that's that's crazy. We tried to do a video, uh, fucking with people in public, but we couldn't do it because we felt no. too bad, and we just thought it was too, you know, like I 
love fucking with people, but not when they have enough anxiety in life. You know what I mean? During normal times, sure, but during fucked up times, no thank you. All right, what else? I think that's it. Really? I mean, I could show the tweet stuff, but I don't know if we go to our interview first. Okay, yeah, let's do it. We're going to go to our interview with Justin Pearson. Uh, If you've been hanging around because you're a Justin Pearson fan, thank you. You're not going to be disappointed. He talks about uh, projects he's been working on during the pandemic, uh, the 10 or 20 bands that he's in, including a Mm -hmm. couple new bands he started, a couple other creative projects he's cooking up. Um, Let's send it over. All right, everybody. We are here with our very special guest. San Diego music legend. Icon. Icon, yes. <laughs> Justin Pearson. Thank you, oh, Justin, shit. for joining us. How's it going? Like, decent, you know. Yeah, yeah de- as good as it can be going with everything considered. Uh, for people who are uninformed or maybe living out of a rock, under a rock yeah. out there, Justin is... Uh, in so many bands, um, a lot of bands that are very notable. Um, he's a member of Locust. He runs 31G Records. And, yeah, just a prominent music figure here in San Diego. We're very appreciative to have him on the show. Um, I'm, I'm appreciative that you're having me on the show. <laughs> oh, well, you know, we got that San Diego connection. We got to help each other out. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> So we've been doing this show for months. Uh, so everybody's kind of heard everything we've been talking about in yeah. our story for a long time. But um, we would love to hear like your perspective, Justin, how things have been going with you for the past year. Um, Johnny and I were actually out at Desert Days oh, yeah. last yeah. year. So we caught one of your performances before all of this madness hit. Um. The tail end of, of what we know as normalcy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the fond memories of the pre-apocalyptic <laughs> times. <laughs> so that was back in like October of 2019, uh, the end of 2019. Can you take us back to that time and kind of uh, what was going on just with uh, your music and your trajectory before all this craziness happened? Yeah, uh, it was, it's weird because I think I was like going full force there. Like, um, so the locust, uh, was on a hiatus up until then. That was the first show we played in like, I don't know, like seven years or something like a long time. And so the locust, we had started writing, um, new material. And then I was also working on a record for, uh, this new project called satanic planet. Also working on a record, a new record for, um, dead cross also started a new project called Death Club and working on a new Planet B record. So there was kind of like a lot of crazy shit happening. And then all of a sudden, like, I don't know what you, I don't even know what to call this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems like we're in like a, some fucked up science fiction film. You oh, know? yeah. So, and you're about to go on tour with like cattle, uh, not cattle gap with um, Napalm Death, right? Yeah, yeah. So it, that's another thing too. Like the Locust had a tour uh Def club had a tour planet b had a tour and satanic planet had a tour and they all got canceled oh, oh my god so you know when all of this started happening there were obviously like news reports and just rumors and stuff coming from around the world and everybody was like scared but nobody really knew what to make of it and how seriously to take it at first um you were like in the middle of a bunch of tours what were was there a uh, talks at first of trying to continue touring in February and March, or was it pretty clear that everything was going to shut down quickly? Like, how did you kind of wrap your brain around as the world was changing? You know. Yeah. Um. I mean, I'm a veteran of being in pandemics. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I no, I don't know. So like, um, you know, one like one, it just it came out like uh things are getting fucked up and there's, you know, they're going to maybe shut down venue or shows or whatever. And then like, and then I did, I just kind of like, I always like go for the worst, you know, I'm like, okay, everything's super fucked up. Like I'm not going on tour. All all of this is canceled. And sure enough, like it's all been canceled. So, so like, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like a surprise, you know, like agents and stuff were kind of like holding on to things like, like not wanting to cancel. And I'm just like, dude, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. So then that was, 
I mean, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's like, you know, growing up like, a you know, as a punk, you're kind of like, you're kind of like bred for the apocalypse, you know? Like, mm-hmm. so I'm like, all right, like, I'll figure out how to like survive nuclear war or whatever, you know? And I mean, I guess it's kind of like nuclear war to some extent, so... It's funny. Yeah, we were kind of the same way around here. Yeah. It became very apocalyptic quickly, and we took it seriously than most people as far as stocking up and preparing for the lockdown and wearing masks and protective gear way before uh, it was like in the news or acceptable. I mean, at the beginning of 2020, we were like on tour as well, and we like couldn't even fathom this. Like, we had just finished our tour, and then it was like, this hit all happened. Yeah, we were like, uh, well, we do conventions and like, you know, events like that. And we had just finished one like a week before all this shut down. So, um, yeah, I wonder if we kind of have the same approach to it and uh, maybe just creative people in general yeah. <laughs> are ready for like shit to hit the fan and for things sure. not to be perfect. But also too, maybe the way our brains are wired, you know, because I like, I was instantly like already kind of starting to like figure out other ways to um, facilitate like art or to, to be, you know, to still be creative and productive mm. and not just like binge watch everything on Netflix, you know? <laughs> so, so like, everyone's like, what are we watching on Netflix? And I'm like, I got fucking three records to record or like, you know, our albums record or like I have, um, I'm, you know, starting to write a new book. Like there was like, just, I was like, re- I was just going, you know? And it wasn't that like, I wasn't able to kind of pause, even though we were forced to pause and, you know, also too, I think like, it, there, there is one perspective where like lockdown, you know, happened, but like for me, you know, it was like the George Floyd protest started and mm. like, you know, and I, and I was active in those protests and I was very cautious and conscious of like my, um, you know, how people perceive like protesters. I mean, progressive people perceiving it like, yeah, people should be protesting that, but like we're in the middle of a pandemic, you know, and you know, I was trying to make sure I was safe and, and, and didn't want to partake in something that wasn't, well, safe in the way of the pandemic, not yeah. safe in the way of like police, you know, brutality or fighting for social justice. Yeah. But like, that was the kind of, the, so it was like weird because I was out a lot, you know, and also too, like, uh, you know, I have a dog. So we were, I'm always like constantly outside. So like, to me, it was just an interesting thing to, to like um, wrap my head around like the, the stay at home thing where like, I mean, the only thing that really changed drastically was that, like, I wasn't eating out in restaurants, aside from going on tour, you know, but everything else was, like, kind of still sort of in line with things. Um, You know, I I mean, I still was, like, working at two studios with um, caution and with and with people that were um, on top of their shit, you know, so, Mm -hmm. like... uh, I didn't, there was no, you know, I still haven't even, con- I haven't, you know, I, I never contacted the virus yet. Um, I'm assuming I will, but um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's weird. So I just feel like, I think I rolled with it and, and kind of kept doing things um, instead of like, instead of shut down in life, like a lot of people like kind of felt the need to, or maybe had to, you know, and also too, like, I get it. Like if you're like, let go from your job or something, but like for me, I don't have like uh, an hourly wage, you know, and I, and I don't really make much from like music and stuff. So like, it didn't really have much of a, um, a shift in, in, in certain ways, except for the fact that I wasn't going on tour, which is generally where I make money. So aside from the no touring thing, like I kind of just was like, all right, like let's get all this other shit done, you know? And so now like, you know, I I'm sitting on like three albums. So I'm sure when that happens, tour cycles will, present themselves when people start playing live music again and I'll be busy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking I'm rambling now. No, <laughs> you're not. Awesome. I think, you know, um, that for a lot of people, you know, 2020 was really hard. Yeah. But for some people, they were able to thrive in 2020. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, with somebody in your position, maybe what you're saying is it allowed for you to work on creative projects and keep the ball rolling. Um, I don't want to speak for you, but I feel like <laughs> we kind of had that. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like we had our nose to the grindstone like this entire year, pretty much. Not having like a regular day job, having yeah. a job where you can like be creative and having a space to do that. Yeah. Allows for some people to, you know, have a 2020 that's a little bit easier than the rest of the world out there. So, yeah. 
you've been working on three albums. You say you're writing a book. Um, is this, what am I trying to say here? Are you kind of filling the time here or are you, are you like waiting for the pandemic to end? Or is this kind of like the stuff you're working on now? Um, is this stuff that you, are you anticipating the end of the pandemic for like a release to all this stuff? Or is it, you're going to press on pandemic or no pandemic kind of your approach to everything you're working on now? Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's like a, um, an end point to, I, I mean, I don't think like this, there's an end of like the pandemic. It seems like it's going to linger for quite a while. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm still planning on releasing records and still planning on doing things. And I do kind of feel a little bit of anxiety, like from like, I, I feel like, Oh my gosh, I'm not doing anything or as much as I should. So I, I do kind of occasionally have that feeling, but for the most part, I feel like, um, let's continue on and like, continue on in the way that like everything should still happen. I mean, records still come out during a pandemic. It's just the only thing that doesn't happen is live shows. So like, for instance, with, with Def Club, you know, mm -hmm. I, a lot of people like started, I, I would see like people kind of like farting stuff out on, on Instagram, you know, or social media, like live streaming this and that. And like, yeah. you know, I don't really, I mean, like that's cool and stuff, but like for the kind of like band that we are uh, and like for like, um, I don't know, like the quality or the intensity, like I, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to set up and like perform, uh, you know, in front of a camera to, to nobody that like as a live stream. So we, we, we have a new record in the, in the works or done or whatever. And so we filmed ourselves performing the album and edited it. So it's like a, a, a product, you know, or something <laughs> like something to like feel the void of no live shows. So it's not just like, it's not just like, you know, because, because it's one thing when you go see a live show, you experience it. There's energy. There's there's all this stuff like that happens um, with between the audience and stuff. And so like performing in front of nobody, you're you're losing that energy, and it just seems awkward and foreign. So so I to me, I don't want to be like, all right, we're gonna do a live stream like performance, and then like try to force it. You know, I figured like let's film something and make uh, something in an artistic manner and edit it to the album, and then have like basically a live performance of the album, but it's not it's not live like as in, as in like real time, you know, and it's, it's just a little bit better quality because, you know, without the, without the actual live experience, without seeing it in the flesh, like right there at a venue, you're, you're missing all these elements. So like, I don't really want to see uh, a, a band um, performing um, with like intensity or something for the, for like an odd, like an awkward, like kind of odd, forced reason <laughs> you, you know you know i know exactly what you mean the sure. yeah because the live show is kind of an experience it's the band and the energy of the room and that whole experience just you don't get but, that through a live stream and so yeah but with that being said like i mean I, i'm not criticizing it across the board because oh, it'd yeah. be one thing if i just sat down with like an acoustic guitar or or there was where like it like with with heart with punk and hardcore like it, it you know you, you you really rely on on those uh on the audience vibe or like the participation even if it's negative and like you're playing in front of people and they hate you there's still a vibe and it still <laughs> it still makes like a, for a performance you know and so i think like that's one thing that like i just couldn't wrap my head around with that everybody was kind of getting on board with and even asking like hey do you want to do this and i'm like fuck no like <laughs> it's hard to do that it's 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 awkward and strange and and seems like for me it seems fake you know i mean i'm i can't It'd be one thing if, I, if it was like, uh, you know, again, like if I performed a different sort of music where it didn't really um, require that uh, element. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's weird. Everything's weird. But with that being said, like, I, yeah, I pushed on and, and, and figured out ways to do whatever the hell I can. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Are you, uh, do you have any, what's your take on like all the venues closing down? It seems like with the pandemic, live entertainment, live music, it's like the hardest hit industry. Yeah. One of them, at least maybe the hardest hit. We've had a ton close down in San Diego, like locally in San Diego, which yeah. is a huge bummer. Um, I'm hoping to see some of those come back. I mean, I don't know the logistics of that, but yeah, I would love to hear your take on that. I mean, it's, it's like anything else. I mean, it's, I guess there's been a lot of focus on like restaurants and stuff. And I think yeah. anyone's business or livelihood closing is a bummer, but yeah, I mean, all the people that work at venues or own venues or performing venues are going to be affected by that. And, and there has been a bit of dialogue. And I think now it's finally like people are kind of um, giving it the attention that it deserves. But for the most part, I think that 
everyone's focused on other other forms of of um, businesses struggling. You know, not really venues because it's not like you know, like a restaurant can still kind of maybe push by with like takeout or, or, you mm-hmm. know, sitting, sitting outside, but like a music venue is just fucked. Like there's no, there's no way to, to, to get around that. So um, I don't know, but I, I saw this documentary on, um, I think it was like, I could be wrong. It was on, it was on YouTube. It was like the owner of um, slide bar, I think, or the owner of, or maybe it was um, Alex's bar. I can't remember. Um, and, and they were saying that like, it was terrible and it was like really bad and they were going to shut down. But he, he, he had the, the, the owner had this like sense of optimism where he was saying like, people will again, like revert to having house shows and they'll put on, you know, events and then they'll eventually graduate to having a venue again. And, 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 and things will happen in that sense. Like that evolution will like kind of happen again. Um, and so that was an interesting perspective because again, like there's not a whole lot we can do. Like, I mean, I can sit and complain about it, but, um, I don't know. I mean, I could, I I don't, and it sucks that people are losing their jobs Mm -hmm. or losing their businesses, but what really sucks are, are like people dying and, and and like, you know, the like negligence of, uh, the political administration and stuff like that, you know, or even the fucking ignorant assholes out there that think that it's still like a a conspiracy, you know? And like, those are the things that I think are really maybe more uh, important to me to focus on than like, well, fuck, I don't have any income for the next however many months or years. And my friends that own restaurants or, you know, barber shops or whatever, you know, record store, like who, whatever, like they're, they're struggling. Like that stuff sucks. But like what really sucks is when like, you know, your friends and your family are dying from the, from the virus. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great to hear like that perspective too. Um, just from you and from the people, you know, who have venues. Uh, yeah, because like institutions will always kind of fall and go away, but it's the people, as long as the people are there and still making, creating stuff, that's what's important. So let's protect the people. Not the. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that like we will sort of see some sort of silver lining in this situation where like, maybe people will start um, observing like the effects of capitalism because that seems like a virus in itself and maybe supporting local businesses and not buying from Walmart and Amazon, you know, and maybe try to do things differently and things that like kind of help their own community and help maybe help the environment, you know, and help the planet where like, before this, it seems like kind of everyone was like full force, just taking a shit on everything, you know, and that, and, you know, <laughs> most, I'm including myself or whatever. Like, I mean, I've learned from this, like you learn to kind of like reevaluate like really basic um, aspects of, of life or, or, or the way you live life, you know? And I think that that might be something that we can learn from this. Um, but again, it's just like each day happens and you're like, holy fuck. I mean, yesterday was one of those days where you're like, Oh, there, you know, there's like, Trump supporters taking over the Capitol. Like this is something that I just like, I, I wouldn't think that would happen, but I also didn't think a pandemic would happen. I also didn't think all kinds of shit would happen. And it's all kind of just like there, here it comes. So like, you know what? I mean, next thing I know, like tomorrow on Twitter, it's going to be like, Hey, there's an asteroid about to destroy the planet or something, you know? And you're like, Oh fuck, well, there's that, you know? And um, you just got to roll with it, I guess. And, and deal with what, Whatever we, <laughs> whatever we're given, you know? Yeah. With all the crazy shit happening in the world, it's amazing that like people want to keep adding on to it. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you're right with this pandemic, it's a perfect time to stop and slow down and kind of look at what got us here. Uh, but people don't seem to be doing that. No, they just seem to be stirring up more shit. <laughs> well, maybe yeah. not, maybe not stop and slow down. Maybe just sort of like reflect yeah. and, and fucking keep going. Like, yeah. you know, because like, you know, like a good example would be like the, I think like people were pretty psyched on, um, I mean, not to get too political or whatever, but like the, the Georgia runoff, um, election that, that went down, like yeah. that was pretty intense and pretty awesome. And like, oh, kind of yeah. crazy. and people were like really rallying more than ever. And, and, and also too, like even the narrative that came out of like the, the protests, like the black lives matter movement and the protests surrounding the George, George Floyd's murder, like those things, created something it wasn't like people like slowed down 
they people fucking went full forward full force with with that and like created some something and also changed a lot of stuff and i think that there's a lot to come out of those efforts so that's i mean again we can always like look at and reflect on the negative but there is something that will there is progression happening um, yeah you know as long as we don't um uh cease to exist as a as a as a living species on this planet you know which maybe we should i don't know but um if we don't then maybe we'll come out of this better than than we were before you know yeah it, 2020 is a pivotal year in more ways than one uh justin this has been a really fun conversation and i would love to keep going all afternoon but we're gonna call it right there <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. About, the word fun is, is really, uh, that's, that's debatable, but I, I think it was, I think it, it, it uh, um, well, important. I think people like hearing your thoughts and just hearing your take on it. And, uh, it was all well said and, and intelligent and interesting. So it's going to be fun thanks. to listen to whether it's dark <laughs> or not. Sure. Um, sure. Thanks for joining us, man. We really yeah, appreciate thank you so it. much. This was awesome. Hey. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And the support and interest in, um, man, I'm, I love San Diego and I, I'm glad to be part of this, um, your, your guys' podcast, but glad to be part of the city and the community and stuff. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, if, is there any, uh, destination on the internet you want anybody to go to or anything you want to have anybody aware of coming out before we, uh, before you hit the road? If not, no. that's fine. No, I hate, I hate it. I hate the internet. <laughs> Look oh up what's God. already there then and enjoy it, uh, everybody out there. Justin, thank you for talking with us. Cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All right. Take care. Thank All you. All right. Take care. All right. We're back. I, thank you, Justin Pearson. Thank you. You know, Johnny was uh, shaking all week. Why are you going to throw me under the... <laughs> Justin's yes. probably watching this right now yeah. and he's like, damn, these guys are so cool. Johnny was so nervous during that interview. He had so many questions that he wrote down that he didn't, I didn't even say get any to, of them. Didn't even get to ask. And um, you were yeah. just trying not to fanboy out. Yeah. It was like, while that was happening, I definitely had a moment where I was like, okay, we got Justin Pearson from the locust and, and I got Derek from mega 64, like two kind of dudes that I look up to when I was like a teenager, wow, just like two worlds, collide. <laughs> like two worlds colliding. And I was kind of like, this is surreal. And I was like, maybe like back in the day when I was living in Brooklyn, I used to have like heart palpitations when I'd go to sleep. I'm like, maybe I died. And this is some weird heaven. Oh, wow. <laughs> a dream come true for Johnny. Yeah. Uh, it was great talking to Justin. He kept tiptoeing into buster territory, mm -hmm. which means I wanted to like bust off on like politics and COVID. Oh yeah. But you know what? I thought it'd be best to be polite for our guests and just let him talk, say his thing. You know, I don't want to antagonize him or goad him too much. It was a good interview though. Yeah. I loved everything he said. That was really fucking cool. It was a fun talk. I thought it was fun. I enjoyed it. I'm into dark shit. I'm into weird shit. I have fun talking about fucked up stuff. That's why I do this podcast why i used to do heart slayers covid slayers covid slayers man covid slayers where does it all end hey everybody out there um do you know what episode this is this, this is, is 25 i think 25 episodes which means we've done about half a year's worth of episodes yeah that's crazy and we just had our first big time guest I'm, I think that I hope we could get more. I think we will get more. And I predict that 2021 is going to be the biggest year for mega 60 quarantine is it mega 60 quarantine. Is it quarantine cast? I call it both. I mean, uh, it's mega 60 quarantine. Also, I do want to say a lot of people have been asking me about getting this up on Spotify. We're just about to get that all yeah, settled. We're working on that. ITunes. We uh, had to sort some, it's stupid behind the scenes stuff yeah, with multiple accounts and this, that, and the other thing. Bullshit. We're going to get it all sorted out and uh, everybody will be happy. So just stick with us before we cut today's show. We have one more segment to go. Over. Oh, wait, first I totally forgot. Um, I've been getting just, I just want to say thank you everyone out there. I've been getting such a like outpour of support for my grandpa and, and all that jazz. Um, so I just want to give everyone an update on that. And all that jazz? I don't know. I, I'm all nervous. that jazz. Um, <laughs> my grandpa's COVID. And be dead. all <laughs> cha -cha, that jazz. Sorry. Um, yeah, I just wanted, I've, I've never like gotten so much support in my life over anything. 
And uh, I told him that y'all uh, were super positive and, and hoping he got better. Um, but I do have some updates. He uh, was in the hospital for a little bit. And uh, I don't know. This virus, I, I, I feel like I learned a lot about it and how fucking scary it is. Because it felt like his mind was slipping at points. Really? Like, yeah. Um, I wrote down some of the things my mom, like he would call my mom every day. And it was a lot of like, I don't need to be here. Why, why are they keeping me here? Um, the doctors almost had to, they threatened to restrain him because he, he kept putting his shoes on to leave. Jeez. Um, but yeah, he called my mom and uh, here's a couple things he said. He, uh, during one call, he said, <laughs> I'm in an episode of Deep Space Nine. My mom was like, what? Yeah, I'm in an episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine right now. And my mom was like, what does that mean? She, he's like, I can't explain it but that's what's happening. Hung up. So that's scary. Um, and then the next day, he called her again, and he said, uh, I'm on Voyager now. I'm on Voyager. Janeway's oh. crazy. <laughs> um, but, uh, this show sucks. <laughs> uh, Seven of Nine is hot as fuck. Uh, no. Uh, he is Rambo a big Star Trek fan? I do. I did. Maybe? I've never talked to this fool about Star Trek. I didn't know he knew what Star Trek was. And until my mom told me, he kept saying he was in episode Deep Space Nine. So Deep Space I don't know. Nine. Um, but yeah, the other day he called my mom and he kept going, I know, I know what you're doing. I know your plot to steal my money. Oh. You're going to trap me here. You're going to make them think I'm crazy. My, my grandpa, just to give everyone like hindsight, he, normal dude, like very chill. Um, this was wild <laughs> to have him be like, I know you're trying to steal my money. Uh, he would like try to get out of the bed and like collapse, be all sweaty. But uh, he finally, they finally released him after all that. Um, they gave him Rendesivir and uh, a bunch of uh, antibiotics and stuff. And that's what was making his uh, organ failure stuff happen. But he's fine now. He's at home. Everything's okay. all good. So I just want to say thank you guys for all the, the well wishes. Is that the right? Yeah. So all the well wishes worked out. Thank yeah. you, everybody. That's so nice. Everyone and, likes spirit bomb. You know, generally, everybody's been very positive yeah. in the comments to Johnny, and he's really appreciated it. Oh, yeah. He's Dude. been talking about it all week. Everybody's yeah, so this nice. Episode, yeah. This episode, everyone, like, all the people that don't usually comment commented, and, and or last week's episode, and, and they were all really nice, and I really appreciate that. Yeah. Everybody out there is fucking awesome. We love everybody. Uh, unless you're a dumb fuck. Yeah, we don't like you. We don't tolerate dumb fucks around here. And we're going to look at some videos of dumb fucks now. Let's get to it. Yeah. But that is good to hear about oh. your uh, update with your grandma. We already looked at this dumb Sorry. fuck. <laughs> so, Somebody should have just pulled his pants down, you know? Just pants him? No, that would have been bad. <laughs> I mean, he was covered in milk. <laughs> no, before, he, before he did the milk. Oh, thing. yeah. I mean... Almost go like he's not even wearing pants. Like, ah, uh, yeah, well, he's wearing something. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm you watch this again. Disable him. This is so like. God. Oh, why did it restart? All right, oh, all right it's looping. This one, um, buddy. so everyone kind of saw this already this week, but I thought it'd be fun to kind of look this at this shit. Stuff. I think we could just switch over. Pissed here. me off so bad, man. Yeah, this sucks. So I don't need to click every video, but I just want to go through the thread because these start getting more and more ridiculous. So I only saw a couple of these. Yeah, this is the this is the one where this was the first one, whatever. By the way, uh, okay, so this one, this woman is trying to ram this guy. She's upset. Supposedly this guy punched her in the face, but then I heard this guy say in this video, she breathed on me. Yeah. Um, if it's a if it's a fucking coronavirus season if it's yeah. viral pandemic even if it's flu season and you're doing like an anti-flu protest and you come up start breathing on people coughing on people that is assault as that's far like as terrorism. i'm concerned no as far as i'm concerned <laughs> look, that's like pulling a gun if you do that to a cop yeah that cop can like detain you yeah you take you down so legally those are grounds for you started the altercation when you start breathing on somebody i support this guy punching this woman in the, this maskless fucking turd of a woman in the fucking face. Yeah. I, just, I fully <laughs> support that shit. In fact, I, my only regret is that he didn't whoop her ass on camera. So dude. I didn't have the satisfaction of seeing it. She's coming at him with that shopping cart, dude. And I know all these people are like, you hit a woman, you fucking pussy. Yeah, that's wrong. 
she fucking coughed on him. Yeah, she's there, there, there too. She's like coughing and shit. They're there to stir up shit. They're yeah. there to start trouble. And then when they get trouble, they don't fucking like it. Nope. I hate that. I can't fucking stand that <laughs> shit. Dude, if you're going somewhere to start some shit, yeah. if you're looking for trouble and you fucking find trouble, don't fucking turn around and start crying like, why are you being so mean to me? That is the most hypocritical, weenie ass fucking... Like, what a wormy, yellow, cowardly way to live your life. I think it it, it, it almost like punctuates these people because it's like they're already weenies and they can't wear a fucking mask. So to begin with, they're the weenies. No, to begin with, they're the weenies. This is the thing that really makes me angry. Generally speaking, my take on all of this. This is such a pussy move. This is the lowest stakes quote unquote protest I could ever fucking imagine. These anti-mask protesters are going into supermarkets and harassing yeah. innocent victims. Yeah. They I'll are oppressing people who have no authority yeah. and they are harassing the weak. People who work at supermarkets have no authority on mask policy. Yeah. They can't change mask policy and they barely are able to enforce mask policy. They're literally there to give food to everybody during the pandemic so we can fucking survive this shit. You're going to blame them. You're going to go to their work. Go do this at a fucking police station. Yeah. Go do this at city hall or government or government building. I don't care. Like Dude. go do a fucking anti mass protest at a government building. You'll be thrown out. I just want to bring this up. Last week we were like making jokes about like uh, that guy in the Bucky's and you said the same thing. You're like, yo, if you really want to make a statement, go to fucking a Capitol building and try to get in there and see what fucking happens. And I was like, yeah, you'll probably get tased. And <laughs> I said the same thing. And someone commented and said, this is an age well. <laughs> I say, I said the same thing then that I say now do that at a police station. Yeah. I do it at a government building. Yeah. I still think if we're going to talk, did. if we're going to talk about the infiltration of the Senate yesterday, that had nothing to do with masks. No. And you know, there was an absence of masks. Honestly, like, I'm not going to speculate or try to give an answer as to why there seemed to be such a lax security response to yesterday's protesters. I don't fucking know. I saw this. I mean, I could oh. speculate. Yeah. I think a lot of those dudes were but like just security. And I think they're, they were overwhelmed a lot. Yeah. So, but, uh, I, it really bums me out that uh, that was just, you know, the level of security they had there. That being said, that yesterday's protest is different from an anti-mask protest. Yeah. I think if you tried to do an anti-mask protest. They, they've done a bunch. Uh, you would be met with fucking resistance. Yeah. You'd be met with resistance. I'm not saying it hasn't been done, Johnny. Yeah. I'm saying that this protesting in a fucking supermarket is bullshit. It's it accomplishes nothing. Yeah. And you are actually the oppressor. You are the instigator. You are the person with power because nobody can enforce this on you. Nobody can force you to leave. Nobody can force you to wear a mask. You are forcing other people to deal with you. And I mean, you have the authority in that situation. So this isn't a fucking protest. No. You're not standing up to people with authority. You're asserting authority over innocent victims. I've said it four times now. Yeah. So that's that's my take on it. I'm I, sorry. I don't like my tone here. Oh, know? no, no. I, I love this. I do want to say that uh, halfway through this protest, they end up in a mall. And uh, yeah, it, this person does start stating that like LAPD was called and they did nothing. So there's a lot of that. Um, my favorite thing about this is the uh, what the person is tweeting starts to feel like a fucking parody. I wish I could uh, zoom in here. Why? Because I want to read the things, but like I can't really see them from here. The anti maskers went next to Bloomingdale's of Century City Mall, uh, showed up eventually. Uh, LAPD showed up eventually, but no, did not try to remove them. Bloomingdale's staff seemed unable to force them to leave. <laughs> yeah, so it's like they hit a Bloomingdale's, and then it's like um, staff escorts a shopper, whatever. I can't read it, but like this guy tried to like fuck with them, gets es he gets escorted out when he tried to fuck with them. So that happens, and then it's like. Oh, dude, this, this one I gotta play. They're doing that MAGA, dude.
<laughs> um, Shut it. I don't fucking care. Turn all this fucking bullshit off. Dude, this love, is not a protest. Oh, man. This get, fucking turn this shit. I'm trying to. The fuck off. <laughs> I can't handle this shit. Fucking dumbass. Stupid ass. Soccer moms. Dancing in a Bloomingdale's. Singing the village people. Come on, catchy. What does that have to do with politics? What does that have to do with like social justice or political change? Like, what are you even standing up for? What the fuck? What even is your fucking statement at that point? It burns me up to see so, so many people galvanized yeah. and impassioned. Over nothing. Like I'm trying to even wrap my brain around the cause that they're trying to support and the change that they're trying to affect. Did they want everybody to take masks off? Cause you're just singing fucking MAGA in a Bloomingdale's. What's the fucking compelling argument of that? I don't get it. Are you trying to get people onto your side and get people into your community? Cause you're just fucking singing MAGA in a Bloomingdale's like, that's not inspiring. No. It's, um, <laughs> it's nothing. Imagine I like, don't know why it exists. I give up. Imagine my that. Brain, like, so, my, my brain is broken. I don't know. Like I imagine whenever I see these people, I just imagine like the beginning of the pandemic and everyone was like, Tiger King's pretty cool. I feel like those are the same people that thought Tiger King was really cool. And then they just like their I brains. Just, I don't even know what you're protesting when you're singing that song in a Bloomingdale's. Do you miss going to Bloomingdale's? Do you miss not wearing a mask in Bloomingdale's? Did Bloomingdale's was Bloomingdale's not MAGA enough for you? I don't get it. I just don't get it. I, don't get it I just can't. This is I'm why I'm sitting going. here trying to decode it and trying to understand like <laughs> what does this all mean? And it's fucking hurting my brain, dude. It's upsetting me. And I'm not upset like uh, triggered snowflake. No, I'm yeah. just upset that like I have to live in a country with, and I have to like be neighbors with people who are so stupid and like yeah. just be in a world and just be aware that I might bump into people that are just so like pointless. <laughs> just have like such a pointless existence. Anyways, thanks for watching. Thank you. Quarantine <laughs> cast. Mega 60 quarantine. Thank you for Justin Pearson thank for you, being Justin. on the show. And yeah. uh, thank you for all the dumb fuck, stupid ass, fucking moronic people out there in America being fucking trashy pieces of shit. Because without you, we'd have no show. Yeah. And, you know, I really appreciate you guys giving us so much to talk about every week. Yeah, I, I was very close to, to grabbing those photos <laughs> of the... The Q shaman guy, but I don't. I don't want to give okay. that guy any air time. When the protests, protests, uh, yeah. terrorist insurrection was yeah. happening yesterday. It's called what? It, what I it popped is. on Newsmax for fun. <laughs> oh, and, and Johnny had God. the reaction I just had was nothing compared to Johnny's reaction watching Newsmax. Was that the first time you'd ever watched Newsmax? Yeah, I, I never wanted to punch a TV in my life. <laughs> he almost broke the TV. I was like, I, <laughs> you were like legit old man screaming at the TV. I was like arguing with the guys on TV. It was amazing. Just dumb fucks. I don't understand how you could go home at night and be content and like, look at yourself in the mirror and know that you're just lying to people. I guess a lot of people do that in this country, but I don't know. I, I couldn't do that personally. So. Anyways. Um, positive comments only on the comments of this video. Yeah. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll be back next week. Uh, try not to get the virus. We're trying not to get the virus. We're trying not to have anybody get it. Do your best. Stay safe. If you wear a mask or if you go to Bloomingdale's wear masks. So if you're not wearing a mask, uh, expect somebody to punch you in the face. Yeah. That's what you deserve.